Okay. Okay. Well, welcome everybody. This is the um, T2 Mental Academy, which is part of Anita Eta Ministries uh, monthly teaching session. And on this particular session, I'm going to be covering healthy living. It's going to be our first of a series in which I'm going to be covering healthy living. And I want to just say that in the last couple of years, I was teaching on um, spiritual fundamentals for women in ministry. But this year, the Lord said to me, you know, help my children with in the area of health and in the area of marriage, because a lot of people in the body of Christ, especially all of you here listening to me, you're not babies in the Lord, right? All of us here, we're not babies in the Lord. So when, when it comes to those topics, such as identity in Christ, you know, praying, fasting, those kinds of topics, like a lot of the heavily spiritual type topics, we love those topics, we understand them basically. But yet a lot of us are sick in our bodies. We are dying every day in our bodies. And we come and we cry to God and we pray for our health. But for, for the most part, it's not shaking and it's not moving. And we don't understand why. A lot of us, especially women, we go to our churches, we, we attend all our different church programs. We attend ministries such as these ones. And we keep growing spiritually. We keep get, getting deeper with the Lord. But our marriages are struggling. Why? Because a lot of us leaders, a lot of us pastors, we're not specifically zoning in into some of these areas where the body of Christ is struggling with. And so the Lord said to me this year, I suspended my spiritual curriculum, if I can call it that. I suspended that curriculum and I'm just going to do run a series on health and run a series on marriage. And we're going to zone in on that. And I really believe that as much as we pray, if we don't understand the principles of life, we are not going to get the results that we ought to get in our prayer life. You know why? There's something that our women in the ministry have heard me say a number of times. Our God, we, we tend to separate our God in terms of the spiritual and the physical. But how many know that even the physical is spiritual? Okay. How many know that even what we call physical is spiritual? Let me explain what I mean by that. You see, in the church, we have divided spiritual things uh, when we are praying, when we are reading the Bible, when we are fasting, when we are worshiping, when we are traveling in the presence of God. We, those are the things we classify as spiritual things. Physical things, we tend to, we, we will put things like how you eat, going to the gym to exercise, sleeping and resting your body. We will classify those things as physical, right? But God was showing me that all of those things are spiritual, really. You know why? It is the same God. The principles that govern our health are spiritual. What do I mean by that? It is God who put those principles in place, even though we classify them as physical. We give them a lesser uh, 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 priority. We put them lower on the totem pole of our spiritual life. We think that if we pursue Bible reading, singing worship songs, and we neglect how we eat, and whether we go to the gym, and whether we get enough sleep at night, we think that those are not as important to God, right? So you will see a person, a prayer warrior, will pray all night. They will not get their sleep. Their body is being destroyed. They can do that the whole week. Their body is not getting what it needs. So while they are growing and building up their spirit man, their physical man is being destroyed. But guess what? God put us, God put the spirit in the physical body. The spirit cannot function appropriately in the earth realm if there is no healthy body to carry it. Ladies, I, I don't know, I, I mean, I cannot say this enough. This is one of the messages I'm going to be loudly saying in this 2022. 
if your physical vessel is broken, you cannot manifest spiritually the way that God has purposed you to manifest. So while we have been minimizing things like health, God has sent me as a voice in the wilderness this year to be talking to the body of Christ. So our next month, invite all your friends. Even when we finish, share this because the body of Christ is dying. We don't realize that. If your physical body is not right, if you're even just feeling pain in your body, if I'm feeling pain, I cannot even sit here and preach. If you're feeling pain, you cannot even show up here to listen to what I have to say. So the two go together and God made it, made us and created us where there has got to be synch synchrony. The physical and the spiritual must be synchronized for us to manifest effectively to the full magnitude of what God intended for you and I. So that's one of the biggest messages I want to carry this year. And we, we struggle in the same way with our marriages as well. Because we can be very good to pray at praying. We can be very good at worshiping. We can read our Bibles. But then when that husband looks at you and I, the attitude he sees from us, the rudeness and the disrespect he gets from us, the lack of patience and long suffering that our spouse sees in us causes him to begin to ask questions about our Christianity, especially for those who are married to people who are not saved. And so as God will help me this year, I will do my best to tackle those two subjects. But for today, we are going to be tackling health. So I want to talk about health. So for a minute, before I actually start to talk about health, today I'm going to actually break down detoxification and why it's important. As a matter of fact, before I talk about detoxification, I'm going to talk about toxic overload. I will start with discussing toxic overload and then I will talk about detoxification today. But before I do those, let me just, let's just go through a few Bible verses because you are, we are all Christian sisters here. Everything we do is in the context of our God, right? It's in the context of the scripture. So I want to just pull a few Bible verses to show us that God cares about our health. So it's not just something that I'm just talking um, from my mouth, okay? So let me just go through, bear with me. Ah, ah. <laughs> I need to take my glasses so I can just see. Um, bear with me for a minute. Okay. All right. Okay. So if you have your Bibles, turn with me to 2 Timothy 5. I'm going to give a few verses. Isaiah 5, 22. Hold on. Let me pull 2 Timothy. I hope you all have your Bible, so sisters. Bear with me a minute. I'm getting there. Okay. Second Timothy two, five, it says, whoever enters, let 
Let me see which version. Okay, let me use the amplified version. And if anyone enters competitive games, he is not crowned unless he competes lawfully. In other words, fairly, according to the rules laid down. Amen. Why did I pick this verse to share with us today? Let me see the English Standard Version. Yes, the English, English Standard Version says, I was trying to pull different versions. It says, an athlete is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. I prefer this version. An athlete is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. So 2 Timothy 2, 5. The reason why I pulled that verse, sisters, is because we have to understand that there are rules, right? There are principles. There are principles that our God laid in place. That if we don't follow those principles, right, we are not going to be successful in our Christian work. We must follow the principles that our God put in place, right? A lot of times we, we, we forget that it's the same God. When God designed our bodies, right, he designed our bodies in conjunction with those principles. And it is only by following those principles that we can win the crown of good health. If we don't follow those principles, no matter how much we pray, we are not going to be healthy sisters. Amen. Okay. Isaiah 5, 22 says, woe to those who are heroes at drinking wine and champions at mixing drinks. The reason why I pulled up this Bible verse is because, okay, a number of us here as, as believers, we probably don't drink. Like I, for one, I don't drink, okay? But there are Christians who drink. And personally, I actually don't believe that is unscriptural to drink. The Bible talks about drinking a little wine for digestion. So personally, that's another whole debate in the Christian faith. But I'm not going to go into that this morning. But I'm, I did not pull this verse to tell people not to drink. That's not why I pulled this verse. I pulled this verse to show us that the Bible is saying that woe to those who are heroes. You notice it's not just saying that you're drinking. You are a hero at drinking wine and you are a champion at mixing drinks. In other words, people who abuse their bodies, right? The Bible, this verse is starting to talk to us about excesses that go through our mouth. That's really what I want us to take from this verse about excessive drinking, excessive mixing of drinks. This verse is starting to talk to us about the fact that what you combine and put in your mouth, that is a health principle. We're gonna learn through this series that for example, eating carbohydrates by themselves might be okay. Eating proteins by themselves might be okay. Eating fats by itself might be okay. But when you combine fat and carbohydrates, it starts to do something else to your body. So in other words, when we're talking about healthy principles and healthy living, we start to learn that there is a way, anything you're gonna put in your mouth, you need to pay attention to the combinations as well. What are you combining? to put in your mouth. Okay, 1 Corinthians 6, 19 to 20. This is a verse that we're all familiar with. Do you, know, do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom, whom you have from God, and that you are not your own? In other words, this touches on what I was saying at the beginning, that our body is what a temple. What is a temple? A temple is a house, right? A temple is a vessel. So like I was saying earlier, there must be a healthy temple to carry the spirit. Your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy, and that is why we die at a certain point. That is why when a human being dies, the spirit no longer has that house. So if we don't care for that temple, we will die. No matter how much we pray healing prayers, if we don't care for the temple, we would destroy the temple to the point where it will die. After a, the physical temple can only take so much destruction. Once we have destroyed it with the wrong drinks and the wrong food and no exercise and the, not sleeping enough, 
it would die. And once it dies, the spirit in that vessel quenches. And then you can no longer manifest on the earth realm. Take your, um, open your Bibles with me to 3 John 1. 3 John 1, verse 2. This is another verse that we're all familiar with. It says, beloved, I hope that you are prospering in every aspect, every aspect and in good health, just as your soul is prospering. Oh, ladies, this is my one of my best verses when it comes to talking about health. You know why? There's another translation that says, and I'm, I'm just talking from my head now. There's another translation that says, I wish above all else that you will prosper, right, in your health. So God is saying that he wants us to prosper, to be in good health, just as our soul prospereth. What is the Bible saying? So God is equating the prosperity of our soul to the prosperity of our health. Listen, let me find, let me try to see if I can pull that translation. Hold on. Because I want us to catch this very well. I really want us to catch this very well. Before we start to go into detoxification. So 3 John 1. Okay. Okay, the, the NIV version says, dear friend, I pray that you may enjoy good health and that all may go well with you, even as your soul is getting along well. So even as your soul is well, even as you are growing in, as a prayer warrior, even as you are growing in the word, the things that feed our soul, right? Even as you are growing in those things that feed your soul, your spirit man, God wants your health to also grow. Let me look at another version. Let me look at the New King James. Ooh. N K J. Okay, the New King James Version says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just. So the New King James uses the word just as your soul prospereth. So we can see that the Bible is putting the two on par. This is the main point I wanted to bring out of this verse. The Bible is not saying that the prosperity of your soul is ahead of your health. Uh -uh. It's not saying that. So we, we must change our mind. Bear with me, somebody's looking for me. Okay, so I wanted all of us to catch this. Let's establish this before we go any, any forward. That the Bible is putting health and the prosperity of the soul on the same level. Proverbs 17, 22. <coughs> Amen. Welcome, Prophet Rosalind. <clears throat> so we're going to move on to Proverbs um, 17, 22. So we have just learned that it is important for us as believers not to neglect our health because we are chasing after spiritual growth. We must grow in the improvement of our health because according to 3 John 1, 2, the two are put on the same level. Amen. Proverbs 17, 22 says, a joyful heart is the health of the body, but a depressed spirit dries up the bones. So our God has taken the time to tell us in his word. We begin to see that when it comes to even our emotional health, 
There are many things that impact our health. We as believers for the longest time, we have ignored a lot of these other things and we are just like a bull in a china shop we are chasing after the, the, the you know the scriptures and that is wonderful but the same scriptures i'm reading these verses from the scriptures we've neglected them your heart must be joyful so if you are a grumpy christian if you're a christian who is easily angered if you're a christian who carries the root of bitterness if you're a christian who easily quarrels your quarrel song if you're a christian who is unforgiving Sisters, I want us to understand today that even as we start this series on health, we are going to begin to check not just the things that I'm going to start teaching on health itself, but we're going to begin to check our, the state of our emotional health. Because if you are not joyful, if you are carrying burdens, if you are stressed, no matter how I teach you how to eat better, no matter how much we pray healing prayers, so ladies, you guys, you and I, we know of many cases in our family, in our churches, where somebody was sick of cancer or some terrible illness, the pastor prayed, they brought the biggest prophet, they prayed, the person was sick until they died. And then we believers, we stand and we are asking, but God, why? We prayed so much. You guys know that one of my favorite passages is Hosea 4, 6, right? My people perish for lack of knowledge. A lot of times we are busy praying, we are crying out to God, Father, heal this person, heal this person. But we have not helped that same sick person to address the state of their heart. What is it that that person is carrying in their heart? What is the emotional health of that person who has diabetes or cancer or arthritis? Are they depressed? Is there something else bothering them? Are they struggling with unforgiveness? Because if they are, the Bible says that a depressed spirit dries up the bone. What is, what is dry? This is the Bible talking about arthritis. But a lot of times you don't see in, in a lot of our, our preaching messages, we are not quoting these kind of verses. We are good at teaching people how to be deeply spiritual, but we ignore these things. So I just love these Bible verses. Let me move quickly and then I'm going to start talking about detoxification. So Hebrews 12, 11 to 13, it says, at the time that all discipline seems a cause, not for joy, but for pain, right? Yet later, it brings the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who are trained by it. So strengthen your drooping hands and your weak knees Make straight paths for your feet that what is lame may not be dislocated, but healed. You know what I'm getting out of this passage, ladies? The Bible is telling us here in the book of Hebrews that there must be discipline. You see, ladies, I'm, I'm using each of these Bible passages to lay the foundation of healthy principles of healthy living. So one of the principles of healthy living that I just talked about is your, the state of your emotional health. But another principle of healthy living is discipline. Discipline. You see, a lot of times we don't think about discipline. In this, we Christians, we, we can grow in our spirituality as far as our worship, our prayer life. We can even learn how to discipline ourselves to show up for midnight prayer daily. But can we discipline ourselves with what we put in our mouth? Can we discipline ourselves to go to the gym? Can we discipline ourselves to make sure that we go to bed by 10 p.m. at night? You see, discipline applies across the board in our lives, not just in our Bible reading and our worship. We already learned from 3 John 1 to 2 that I wish that you will prosper in your health, even as your soul is prospering. So we already learned that the God equates 
the prosperity of our health and the prosperity of our soul, he puts them at the same level. Therefore, when it comes to how we apply discipline in our lives, we have to apply discipline, not just in our prayer life, not just in our Bible study life, but also in our the, the principles of physical healthy living. So it says all discipline, it seems, for, it, it seems for a while not for joy. So discipline can be painful, right? It, discipline it seems as if it says, but for pain. Yet later it brings the peaceful fruit of righteousness. What is righteousness? Those who are standing right. We already talked about the fact that you cannot stand right in Christ if your vessel that is supposed to carry, the, that temple that is supposed to carry the Holy Spirit, if that temple is destroyed, if it is broken, if it is not standing right, it cannot carry the Holy Spirit. Then the verse goes on to say, to those who are trained by it, what does that tell us? That tells us that if we don't train ourselves as far as the principles of healthy living, it's going to take training. Good health does not just happen. I myself, ladies, I've been a victim of this from, you know, I grew up, for those who know my family, I grew up with a mother who is a health, uh, a, a natural health professional. But yet we just wanted to escape all those principles that she taught us. Because like Hebrews 12, 11 is saying, all discipline seems a cause not for joy, but for pain, right? As a child, when my mother would try to give us carrot juice, when she would try to tell us not to eat white bread, to only eat brown bread, it looked as if it was a painful thing that she was doing. But the Bible is telling us here that in eventually it will bring the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who are trained by it. In other words, as we begin to train our mouth, our tongue, our taste buds, our body to obey, to bring the body into subjection. The same way that when we fast, we bring our bodies, our physical bodies into subjection to the Holy Spirit, to the spirit man. In the area of health, we have to learn how to bring our physical body onto subjection. What am I saying? So all of us who are in the habit of saying, oh, I don't like how that thing tastes bitter. I don't like how that thing tastes sour. We also have to tame the tongue. Ladies, the same way that you tell your body that today you are going to fast, you're going to learn how to start telling your body that today you will drink this lemon. Today you will drink this bitter leaf juice because it will heal your liver. You get what I'm saying? You're going to start telling your, 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 your body and your tongue that to, you will not eat this cake. I know you like sugar and you like sweet things, but this sugar will give you cancer. So you get, look, the same principles we apply when it comes to fasting, we are good at that. We are going to learn to bring the tongue under subjection. So the, the verse goes on to say, so strengthen your drooping hands and your weak knees. So it takes training to strengthen our drooping hands and our weak knees. So whatever is weak, how are you going to strengthen your drooping hands and your weak knees? It starts in the mind, it's it, with the renewing of the mind. And that's why I'm starting this series with Bible verses. I'm not going to cover so many Bible verses in the rest of the series because I'm going to enter deeply into, into health, you know, uh, teachings on different aspects of health. But I wanted to lay a biblical scriptural foundation for what we are about to do in this series. It says, make straight paths for your feet that what is lame may not be dislocated, but healed. In other words, what we are doing in this series is we are making straight paths for our feet. We are going to begin to make every crooked place straight. Everything in our health that was upside down, we are going to begin to clear the path for it. So that what is lame, my body is already lame. My body already has sickness. Your body already has sickness. We are already lame. The Bible says that so that what is lame may not be dislocated, but healed. So I'm not gathering you guys here to come and begin to just pray for healing. At some point we will pray for healing, but we are going to first learn because my people perish for lack of knowledge in all our getting. If we don't get knowledge and get understanding, in other words, if we don't get what is understanding, understanding is the application of the knowledge that we have gotten. So if we don't do that, the body that is already lame is gonna be dislocated. But, but Hebrews says that, no, we want that body to be healed. 
Proverbs 14, 30 says, a tranquil mind gives life to the body. So this is reinforcing what I said earlier, right? <clears throat> From Proverbs 17, 22. This, this verse is saying, your mind must be tranquil. Those of us who are carrying all kinds of burdens, you have not yet learned how to lay your burden at the feet of Christ. As we go through this series, you're going to be checking even the state of your mind, your thoughts. What are you thinking over and over? Are you fearful because you're sick? Because the doctor has given you a crazy diagnosis and is worrying you? It goes on to say, but jealousy rots the bone. Okay. I wanted to just mute us. Amen. So... It says that, but jealousy rots the bones, right? So sisters, we women, we, we, are, we struggle a lot with competition. Those of you who have been, if you're listening to me and you are one of those people who worries about the fact that, my gosh, this other sister was able to get her master's degree this year. I am still backwards. I've not yet achieved anything in my life. You start to envy starts to come in, jealousy starts to come in. We're going to search ourselves because sometimes we don't understand that all those things affect our health. Amen. Proverbs 3, 7 to 8 says, be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. Every kind of evil. You, don't, you guys don't even need me to preach on this one because we are all mature believers here for the most part. It says that this will mean health for your flesh and vigor for your bones. So be not wise in your own eyes. What is that saying? Have a teachable spirit. So as you have come here into this health series, let's be open. Don't say, oh, oh, me, I don't eat this type of thing. I don't drink this type of thing. No, 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 no. Me, I'm like this. No, I cannot sleep at 10 at night. I, I, can, I only sleep at whatever. Be open. Be not wise in your own eyes. Amen? Okay? So I wanted to just go through those Bible verses. We've set the foundation. The main message that we get from all those Bible verses is that God cares about our health. God does not want us as believers to be running after the scripture, running after worship songs, running after prayer sessions, attending Christian conferences, and our bodies are being destroyed. The temple that is supposed to carry the spirit man is being destroyed, and then we die. Our life is cut short. We don't live the fullness of the years that we were supposed to live on earth. And we don't accomplish the purpose for which God sent us on earth. That is the main message I want us, want us to bring through those Bible verses to show us that God cares. And so let us begin to place priority on our health. Amen. So I want us to enter now into a discussion before I begin to teach on this detoxification. I want to talk about, I just want to let a few people unmute yourselves for a minute if you want to, if you're going to answer, the, the, I'm going to throw out a few questions, right? Somebody tell me why are you here? I just want to hear from a couple of people. What made you to come to a health session? Anybody mute yourself and just tell me what, what made you interested in, in, in a series on health? Are you dealing with something? Uh, Good morning, everybody. Mm -hmm. Good morning. Just say your name and then say what you want. Good morning, to say. everybody. My name is Prudence Yoke, um, and I'm very happy to be here today. Um, what makes made me want to be here this morning is um, I say, he who has health has life, Amen. and so without health, there's no life. Amen. And so it's important to, it's that you cannot fight something that you don't know. Mm -hmm. And so being equipped with knowledge of what I need to do to keep myself healthy is what brings me here this morning. Because I think that uh, the word of God says, true knowledge shall the just be delivered. And mm -hmm. sometimes we quote these Bible verses, but we, we need to put them in practice in our life. And so if I know what I need to do to keep myself healthy, then I think, the battle is already half won there. So that's why I'm here this morning. Thank you, Prue. Thank you, Prue. Thank you. Okay. Um, let me ask another question. On average, 
maybe one or two people. How many hours do you sleep per night? Not Prue, someone else now. How many hours do you typically get of sleep per night? Hello, Pastor Anita. This is Sister B. Hey, Sister B. I want to answer that first question also before I answer the second one. Okay. Thank you so much for putting this up. This is one of my passion Amen. as a health coach pharmacist and an author of Living a Healthy Lifestyle. And my fourth book is Healthy Living and Faith. So when I saw that, I was so excited because I know we fast and we pray, but what else do we have to do as Christians? Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for teaching this. It is so, so important in the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. Fasting, praying is wonderful. Praise and worship, church is wonderful. What about how are we taking care of our bodies? How are we exercising? What are we eating? This is an important topic. Mm -hmm. Very, very important. How to manage your weight, how to manage stress is amazing. So mm -hmm. by the grace of God, I try to sleep like seven to eight as I just try. Sometimes not possible, but it's important to sleep well and to be healthy, to have a sound mind and you make the right decision. So thank you so much for this teaching. God bless you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. How many hours do you sleep at night? A couple of people, please unmute yourself and just answer that quickly. Ladies, are we there? I'll answer. I see gonna, yeah. participate for you. <laughs> yes. Um, I don't sleep very well at night, I'd have to say. I sleep well, I can sleep. But in terms of hours, it varies. I'd say on average, maybe five. So you think five, hours. maybe, on average. Mm -hmm. Okay. During the week, catch up. Okay. Yeah, on average. Okay. Anyone else? How many hours do you sleep at night? Okay, someone says four to six hours. Mm -hmm. I'm like this, I don't, I'm not usually able to... Usually I don't follow the writings when I'm, I'm not as good with following um, the chat when I'm ministering or teaching. So if you don't mind, just unmute and quickly give me a, an answer. Okay, so I'm asking these questions just to get a feel for where we're at. Is there anyone who sleeps at least eight hours regularly? Anyone? Okay, so when we begin to talk about health, right, I just wanted to say that the reason why I put asked some of these questions is just to show us that when we talk about health, we're not just going to be talking about what we eat. And yes, a lot of what we do is going to be focused on what we eat, but it's also very important to pay attention to what we drink, how we sleep, how often we exercise, how many people here exercise at least three times a week. You know, it looks like nobody. Okay, so exercise comes into it, sleep comes into it, food comes into it, our emotions come into it, our mental state comes into it, right? Our skin comes into it, as in what we put on our skin. So this is giving you cues on some of the kind of topics we're gonna to be covering as we go through this series. We're gonna talk about what you put on your skin. What lotions do you rub on your skin, right? What kind of air are you breathing? What are we exposed to? These are all the things that affect our health. In other words, how we eat, what we drink, what we rub on our skin, the quality of the air we're exposed to determines the toxic burden of our bodies. So sisters, I wanna talk about toxic burden for a minute. Our bodies are always exposed to something. If you step out there, depending on what city you live in, for example, I lived in LA for many years. It is not a secret that there's smog in LA. If you just look at the atmosphere in LA, you see smog, you see pollution. You see industrial pollution in the air and we are breathing all of that. 
We all know about what happened with people who lived around the Chernobyl. I think Chernobyl was this place around Russia some years ago where there was an explosion and people ended up with cancer and many horrible illnesses. So that depending on where we live, a lot of times if, if you live in the West versus uh, uh, a lot of maybe like places like Africa or the Caribbean, there's a lot more industrial pollution in the West. But then if you get places like say, say my country, for example, Cameroon, where the waters are polluted, the fishes, a lot, in a lot of cases, there could be things like mercury in the water. And so you may be eating fish thinking that you're eating healthy fish, but you're putting mercury in your body. Mercury now leads to heavy metal toxicity in your body through the fish that you were eating. So the body now starts to build a toxic burden based on the environment. So that is environmental, right? And none of us can escape environmental toxins because we don't control the atmosphere, right? We don't control the seas. We don't control the environment. So there's very little that you and I as individuals can do. But what we can do is that we can learn how to detoxify so that the toxic burden of your body does not get so high that your body starts to manifest illness. So that's the environment. Okay, now your toxic load is not just determined by the environment. It's also determined by what you eat. Now, what we eat, we have full control of that. And that's why a lot of this series, we're gonna be talking about what we eat because that's one of the biggest areas that we can manage. Nobody's forcing you to go eat some kind of processed canned peas, right? You can make a choice. When it comes to what you drink, you can make a choice. Nobody's forcing you with a gun on your head to drink a can of soda. You can choose to drink water instead of soda. You can choose to drink freshly squeezed juice instead of soda. You can choose to drink a, a, a healthy green tea instead of soda or instead of whiskey. So when it comes to what we eat and what we drink, we have choices. Now, if we make the wrong choices, then we are adding daily with everything you put in your mouth. You're either poisoning yourself or healing yourself. Somebody take that down. Everything you put in your mouth, you are either poisoning your body or healing your body. There's no in between. That is a fundamental when it comes to health, to healthy living. When we begin to think like that, when you remember that phrase, somebody needs to write it down and put it near in their kitchen. Somebody needs to write it down and put it by their bed so that you remember it every time you want to put something in your mouth. You ask yourself, am I about to poison myself or am I about to heal myself? So when we talk about the toxic burden of the body, it is based on things that we have put in the body from, we think about it from you were in your mother's womb, from I was in my mother's womb, the things that my mother was exposed to. I'm sure we've seen on TV sometimes they're talking about maybe a certain type of vaccine or a certain type of medication that women that were pregnant took and how it, babies were born lame, uh, you know, disabled or something, right? That tells us that our toxic load, our toxic burden began from our mother's womb. So depending on how healthy your mother was, you were born on a certain scale of toxicity. So many people come into this world already burdened with toxins. And then they begin to feed us. For many of us, many people were not breastfed appropriately. Some were not even breastfed at all. And God designed breastfeeding because it has everything that a baby needs in order to be healthy. But many of us in the modern world, they began to feed us with uh, um, 
formula that we human beings, we manufactured. And yes, there were conditions sometimes that that could not be helped, right? But I'm just speaking, calling a spade a spade. So we've, we were fed with that. We were exposed to what? Different lotions that our parents were rubbing us as babies. A lot of the baby oil that was put on our skin as babies were made from what came out of mineral oil, which was a petroleum product. Petroleum products are actually unhealthy for us. But as babies, they began to rub those things on us. The baby lotions, uh, um, the creamy ones have many different chemicals mixed in them, even though they would tell us that those are more, they're milder than the lotions that we as adults would put on our bodies. But all of that, our parents began to apply on our bodies because of lack of knowledge. The Bible says that my people perish for lack of knowledge. So they applied those things on us and we were smelling nice and everybody was kissing us and hugging us. Oh, because this baby smells awesome. You know, how many people love how babies smell, right? We all love how babies smell because of those lotions and those, those baby oils. We did not know that we were poisoning the baby. So through the years, our toxic burden has built up. From the air we breathe, the food we eat, the water we drink, everything we come into contact with, the lotions that we apply on our bodies. So the toxic burden of our body is the accumulation of all these toxins, all the unwanted substances that have built up. And that's the reason why a lot of times, brethren, we may be healthy as kids, not so much because we are healthy. When you look at the average human being, they look healthy if they're like you and I, like how I look now, right? But you don't know what is going on in my body. Even I may not know what is going on in my body. And so the human being continues to rub those lotions, continues to eat those processed foods. And by the time, depending on how you were born and what you inherited from your mother and father, some people were born in a better position than others as far as the toxic burdens that they were carrying. So for some people, they may start to manifest illness in their 20s. Some start to manifest illness in their 30s, in their 40s, in their 50s. And if you were good, you may not manifest any, any terminal illnesses until you are in your maybe 60s or even 70s or even 80s, right? And that is why in our latter years, that's mainly when you turn around and you begin to realize that almost everybody around you has some type of illness. Almost everyone around you is on some type of regular medication that they're taking. Is because of the toxic burden, the body gets to a point where it can no longer carry that burden. The body does not know what to do anymore because in the earlier stages of our lives, the body was beginning to change how it's digesting food, how it's processing different things. It was, it was, it tried its best to adapt to what we were, we kept feeding it. But as we got older and older and we were giving in more toxins, at some point the body just breaks down. That's when you hear that this person has cancer. That's when you hear that this person has, you know, diabetes, you know, in insulin resistance, right? Because the body, we are fed the body high sugar levels from all the sodas that we drank as kids in birthday parties, in our homes, as adults, all the soda, all the malta, all those things, even the beer with, with high levels, excessively high levels of processed carbohydrates that all convert into sugars in the body. The body gets to a point where it becomes insulin resistant and you become pre-diabetic. When you become pre-diabetic, that's when you realize that you cannot lose weight. So at first, you, you don't, you, you're not diagnosed as diabetic, but you are pre-diabetic. A lot of us are pre-diabetic. That's why we struggle with our weight. We keep putting on weight, we exercise, but the weight is not really going down the way we want it to. Or maybe it, it goes down for a little bit, it all comes back up again. Why? Because we are pre-diabetic. 
We are already dealing with insulin resistance because the, the, the sugar load in our body is too much. And when it gets to a certain level, it now provides, don't know where to put it. It now provides you don't know where they're putting um, it. When it gets to a certain level, it now provides a type of environment in which viruses, bacteria, you know, all kinds of different pathogens, worms, it now, pre, pre, you know, it, it provides that type of environment for pathogens to thrive. And when pathogens begin to thrive, they themselves excrete toxins in our body. So imagine a worm, for example, pest, uh, you know, imagine a worm in my stomach or your stomach that it eats the good food that I even put in my body, it eats it, it excretes inside of me. That begins to create a cancerous environment in my body and yours. It begins to create an environment in which there's high inflammation, high levels of inflammation. Every part of the body is inflamed. Then you begin to deal with joint pains. Arthritis begins to come. So the foundation of all our illnesses, frankly speaking, is toxic overload. Toxic overload that leads to high levels of inflammation. That leads to an environment in which pathogens thrive. And in such an environment where there is high inflammation and high numbers of pathogens, even when we now eat healthy, if I give you a cup of, of, of orange juice or carrot juice, your body may not even be able to extract the vitamin A out of that carrot juice. Because the body, the digestive system is already destroyed. The gut is destroyed. That's why we begin this series by talking about toxicity. Because with a toxic body, even if you start to go to the gym, you, the body is not going to be responding the way that it should respond. If we don't correct, bring down the toxic load, bring down the toxic burden of the body, no matter how much you exercise, no matter how much you now start to drink juice and drink a lot of water and eat salads and large amounts of fruits or healthy meats and healthy fishes, you may find that the body is not even able to digest it because the digestion is broken. I've been through that. So how many people are recognizing themselves in some of what I am saying here this morning? I pray that this is starting to help you to understand the foundation of why you may be trying to lose weight and you're not succeeding, of why your joints may be paining you, of why you eat and you feel as if the food is just hanging out here or as if, you know, the food is going to come back, it's not digesting, it's going to, you know, you, or you eat your burping continuously. Why your skin may be too dry. When your skin is too dry, no matter how much you rub lotions on it, it's not really solving the dryness. Why? Because the issue is internal. If you have inflammation internally, it may manifest in skin, uh, a different type of skin conditions. You may be having acne a lot and you think, oh, I just need to rub something. No, it's internal. Everything we're dealing with is internal. Amen. I pray that this is blessing somebody. All right. So let's talk about what causes, I mean, I, I know I've already talked about what causes high um, toxic levels, right? There are substances called PFAS and the scientific word is, gosh, it's hard for me to pronounce it. PFAS, just take it down as that. Polyfluoroalkyl. I don't, I, whew, that's a mouthful, but we're just going to call it PFAS. 
Now, PFAS is what is used in products such as Teflon, Scotchgard, right? Do you guys know what, I'm sure as women, we, we, we probably know what Teflon is. You know those pots that are coated? So we're gonna have a, series, a session where we're gonna talk about what is in our kitchens. We're gonna have sessions where I'll be, begin to give you guys exercises at different sessions. We're gonna have a session where we are cleaning our houses, where we are removing some things from our kitchens. We are removing some things from our bathrooms because those are things that are continually bringing poison into our bodies. So for example, Teflon, is, it contains the PFAS, right? You know, pots that are coated. It makes it easy for us to cook. So food does not burn. But guess what? Teflon, as the food is cooking, some of the chemical in that Teflon is seeping into the food. And this PFAS causes cancer. It increases our risk for cancer and other diseases. So if they were to test our blood, even a baby's blood, most of us, especially in the Western world, they will find that our blood carries those chemicals. Even the blood of new newborn babies. Because we are drinking PFAS in our water, we are eating it in the food, all kinds of different heavy metals, mercury, cadmium, lead, these are all things that are passing through the containers in which our food is. Warming food in plastic, cooking food in Teflon pots, cooking food in aluminum pots. For those of us who are in Africa, those aluminum pots are not good for us because aluminum seeps into the food. Imagine when, you, when heat comes into contact with Teflon or heat comes into contact with aluminum, it triggers a chemical reaction. And then it goes into our food and we are eating that equang or we are eating that eru and we are enjoying it, but we are also poisoning our body. And imagine that we have eaten like that since we were kids. That's why now in our 40s, in our 50s, in our 60s, in our 70s, we are sick. Now we have cancer. Now we are battling multiple sclerosis because the body cannot deal with it anymore. The load is so heavy. Many have been exposed to lead just based on different products that we buy and we use, we apply. How many children used to chew their pencils when we were little and those pencils contain lead? Many of us don't even know some of the products that contain lead and cadmium and mercury in them. A lot of our vaccines contain mercury, for example. A lot of the vaccines, and I'm, when I say, I'm not anti-vax as far as COVID. That's not where I'm not getting political with this. I'm talking vaccines in general. A lot of the vaccines that we were all given when we were kids, it contained a lot of these PFAS. And so we have taken it into our systems. Let's talk about pesticides, herbicides, fungicides. These are all things that a lot of the food that we eat today, if, our, if your food is not organic, then chances are it contains uh, herbicides and fungicides. It contains these things. If they were to test our urine, we would see that it contains pesticides and fungicides. Amen? So I know that it sounds some of these things may sound very discouraging, but that's why we are doing this series. We're gonna enter into a, a, you know, a segment where we begin to talk about what can we do about it because hope is not lost. If we continue in ignorance, then we are continuing to increase our toxic load and then we are doing nothing to decrease it. But if we know these things, I have to break it down like this because if I just came here today and I began to tell you that, okay, stop eating this or start drinking this, you're going to tell me that, oh, woman of God, I cannot drink this because it tastes terrible. But when you understand what you've been doing to your body, it makes it easier for you to, to say, okay, I'm going to discipline this body 
to begin to stop doing the things that are increasing the toxic load and, and then begin to do things that can reduce the load. Because if you stop doing what increases the load, your body still has all that poison in it. You're still going to get sick. So we have to go beyond just stopping to eat and drink those things. There are things that we can do to begin to reduce what is already in our body. Okay. So I want to talk also about electromagnetic frequencies. All of us are exposed to that, right? We all have cell phones, we have tablets, you know, Wi Fi, all our computers, different devices. <clears throat> you know that these things affect the body. <laughs> Electromagnetic frequencies affect the body. They affect the systems in our body. They affect the poison or the toxic load in our body as well. It increases our risk for things, diseases such as cancer. So I know that we live in a modern world where we cannot completely, we cannot shut down all these things completely, but we can do things to begin to reduce the load, the toxic load that our bodies are carrying. Amen. So let me talk about one more thing and then I'm going to begin to talk about, or maybe a couple more things. And then I'm going to begin to talk about the symptoms of toxic overload. How do you know that your body's load is too much? Before I do that, let me talk about something else that is very prevalent and most people don't know about it. And at some point we will do a full session on it. It's about candida overgrowth. It's something that I have personally battled for so long. Candida is a fungus. It's fungal overgrowth. Almost everybody, almost all of you here, if I test you guys, and when I cover that series, I'll give each of you a simple test to do to know whether you have fungal overload or overgrowth. Anyway, same thing. For years, I did not know that I had fungal overgrowth. You begin to crave sugar. You cannot have enough of sugar. You love sweet things because the candida is calling for sugar. And so you're going after the things that the candida wants to eat, not really what your body needs. In other words, yeast infection. If you're a woman and you've ever had, for those of us who went to Seca, sugar, sugar. If you have UTIs, urinary tract infections, if you have UTIs sometimes, or you have sugar, sugar sometimes, right? Or your body itches a lot, or your private section itches a lot every so often. It may be a sign that you have, you have yeast overgrowth. This also resides in our, uh, um, in our digestive tract. It resides in our skin, in our vaginal canal. It is something that is natural. God made our bodies for the fungus to be, you know, for, for candida, for yeast to be in our body, but it, it should be in our body in a controlled way. That's why it is called fungal overgrowth because when it overgrows, then it becomes a problem. And that's why you guys hear a lot of talk these days about probiotics because we take probiotics so that we can increase the good bacteria right? We want the good bacteria to be more than the bad bacteria. So we want the, the, the microbiome of our stomach, of our gut is very important. But when there is an overgrowth of the wrong type of pathogens, then they begin to trigger disease. They begin to increase toxins in our body. Okay. It changes the pH levels of our gut. It begins to cause inflammation, heavy, high levels of inflammation. It begins to cause hormonal imbalances. It even begins to cause mental illness. Because what is going on when, when your gut is sick, it speaks to your mind, it speaks to your brain. So a lot of people with mental illnesses test their gut, you will see what I'm talking about. As a matter of fact, a lot of people with cancer, if you test them for candida, you will realize that they have fungal overgrowth. So that's another important thing that I wanted to bring up. 
you know, the state, the health of our gut. And when the gut is sick, mind you, no matter what kind of good food you put into that gut, you're not able to extract the goodness. So it, it does not go into your cells. So the body continues to degenerate, even though you are trying to eat good food. That's why one of the big topics we're going to cover in this series is how to heal your gut. Because if we fix the gut, then it begins to work as normal. Then our food can digest. Then there, is, there are no pathogens in there to keep pumping toxins in our body. Then our cells can become healthy. Amen? Then the, the last thing I'm going to talk about before going into symptoms is hormones. <laughs> if our hormones are not right, it also affects our body, also brings hormone imbalances. It begins to cause irregular cycles, right? For, for us as women, our cycle goes off. When we rub chemicals on our body that were rubbing nice smelling body lotions, the body interprets it as a type of estrogen. That in itself begins to throw our estrogen levels, uh, you know, it begins to throw all our different hormonal levels, it throws it off. It gives the body different signals. So those are all things that I wanted to lay the foundation for what causes the body to, be, to go whack. What causes the toxic overload in our bodies? We've covered those things. So now let's talk about a few of the symptoms, right? How can you know that your body is not right? Ladies or gentlemen, if there's any males here. Look, frankly speaking, I, I think by now, most of us are not are older now, right? We are not in our teenage years. I don't even know if there's any, even anybody here who's in their twenties, right? I'm thinking most people here are at least 30 and more. By now you should be able to know that your body is not right. Know how to read the signs in your body that something is not right. So the first thing is that you, and we are believers. So even the spirit of God within us will tell us, you know that you're not well, even though you, have, you may not have been diagnosed with a terminal illness, you know that something is not right. But in terms of the physical signs, headaches, do you get headaches a lot? If you get headaches a lot, your body is unhealthy. If you get headaches a lot, your body is unhealthy. If you are irritable, as in your mental state, you just don't feel right, even mentally, you're easily irritated. <laughs> that looks as if it's just in your mind, but trust me, it's tied to the state of your health. If you get brain fog, you forget your words. Sometimes you just feel a little confused or you're not able to focus and concentrate, you get easily distracted, that could be a sign that your body is unhealthy. Are you bloated? That's one of the big ones that I dealt with. Most of us are bloated. That is a clear sign of inflammation. If you're bloated, do you pass out wind a lot? Do you burp a lot? If you're burping a lot, it could be a sign that your, your digestive acids or the pH level of your, of your gut is not right. And therefore, when you eat, you just bloat. You're filled with gas because you cannot break down that food. It starts to putrefy. In other words, it starts to rot. The food rots in your belly and causes bloating because you were not able to digest what you ate. Do you have sugar cravings? So do you love sweet things a lot? You like cake, you like uh, uh, chocolates. I used to be able to eat a whole bag of chocolates in one go. When I start, it's like I cannot stop. That's a sign that your gut is sick. Are you struggling to lose weight? If you've been trying to lose weight and you, it's not working, it's a sign that your body is sick. You may not have been diagnosed with a terminal illness, but it's coming. It's a sign that your body is sick. It's coming if you don't do something about it. How about congestion? 
you know, one of the ways that I began to realize that I was sick, that I was not, I was not healthy years ago when I was in California, I would always have like a white foam in my, that in my throat. I was like, but this is not kata, it's not cough. I would just have like, a, you know, like nasal congestion or sinus congestion in your sinuses. It's a sign. Skin issues, right? You're always breaking out. You have eczema. You have redness in your skin. Different things are happening. Look at these ladies. Can you guys see? Let me come a little closer. Can you see? I have a little dark. It's almost gone because I've been working on myself. You know, you just have things erupt in your skin. And we can... There's even a way, there's a depth of some of these things. For example, that darkness, that scar occurring on the right side of my face is an indication that something was going on with my liver. There are little cues that can tell you even exactly what is wrong with your body. So I began to work on my liver. So your skin, what is going on with your skin? So we are gonna need, some of these sessions are gonna have to be interactive because I'm not just gonna come here and talk to you. Because we can begin to, like how I'm, I'm giving you guys some of my own examples, I'm gonna need you guys to be talking also, what's going on with you? What are you seeing in your body? What are some of the telltale signs that you are experiencing? Let's talk about it. That way we can begin to figure out what you need to do to help yourself to heal. So we, we just talked about skin issues, digestive issues. So if you're somebody who you either get diarrhea a lot or like me, Mine was constipation. Somebody says acne on the face at, at late age. Yes, acne on the face at late age is, is, a, is toxic overload. I used to constipation. I struggled with constipation for so long. For so long. It was like no matter what I do. Some people have diarrhea no matter what they do. Or indigestion. Acid reflux. All different types of digestive issues that you eat and you just feel as if the food is just sitting there, like a stone in your stomach. Yeah, somebody else says constant bloating. Okay, let me let me see some of your messages. Let me go there and see the chat line. I told you guys I'm really bad with chat line. I see Miranda Oge. Welcome, Becky. Welcome. Those that I had not greeted earlier. It's not I'm looking at you guys. Um, I don't know if you want to stay. We have if anybody who wants to join the ministry forum after this, just let us know because that's where I announce the sessions. Normally I do this once a month, but I may have to do it more frequently so that you know that way I can announce it and you all know. Okay, someone says acid reflux, occasionally headaches bloating, acne, and so forth. Okay. Yeah, so we have about 20 more minutes. This is supposed to be a two-hour session. Um, we have about 20 more minutes. So, so those are the signs. Um, those, or let me say those are some of the signs, right? So, I want to talk about when you have toxic Okay. Okay. So when you have, when you see these signs in your body, it is also an indication that your immune system is weak. And now, especially with the pandemic, there is, there's not, we have, I don't think we've been through in our own generation, we've, we've not been through another time like this, where the health of our immunity or our immune system is of the utmost importance. A lot of deaths arising from COVID, and ladies, I know that COVID is vicious, but I tell people that one of the big things we can do to help ourselves, whether or not we take vaccines, is to strengthen our immune system. And if, if you have those, some of those symptoms that I've been talking about, if you don't deal with those things, 
then your immune system is not going to be strong. And therefore, if you get exposed to something like COVID, you see, that's why they say that if you notice a lot of those who have died from COVID, they say that they had other conditions. In other words, the immune system was broken already. Because by the time that you are already diagnosed with any of these terminal illnesses, it's a sign that you have a broken immune system. But even those of us who are not yet at the point of terrible diagnosis, remember I gave the example of pre-diabetes, right? Where you already have insulin resistance, even though you have not been diagnosed as a diabetic. The same applies to every illness. You, we may already have cells that are, are proliferating in our bodies, but we may not have been diagnosed with cancer. You may already have organs that are not working the way they should, but you may not have been diagnosed with cancer in that organ already. So why not, why don't we do things to stop it and reverse what has already begun? So when we talk about our immune system, the, our immune system involves how our cells work. I mean, for those of us who did even O-level biology, the white cells that fight diseases, right? Even our circulatory system, the blood, and how it carries nutrients into every part of the body to ensure that we are healthy, to ensure that every cell is supposed to function the way that it is supposed to function. The chemical messaging of our body based on our hormones and how it works, those are all the components of our immune system how the body communicates. If it's not communicating right anymore because the hormones are messed up, because different organs are not working right, then it breaks down our immune system, okay? And that's why a lot of what people struggle with is autoimmune illnesses. So immune, diseases such as multiple sclerosis are autoimmune, SIBO, those are all autoimmune type things. So what causes autoimmunity or autoimmune issues? Gut health, the state of your gut is very important. The gut is like the central command of the body. That's what I have learned. We used to think it was the mind, but when it comes to physical health, it is really the gut. Stress levels, we looked at Bible verses that talked about our, the state of our, our mental state, our emotions and so forth. Those are tied to stress levels. Are you under a lot of stress from your work, from your marriage, from demands to do with your family, from poverty, you know, financial problems? Are, are all those things causing you to be stressed? If they are, as a believer, then you need to work on how to depend on God, how to lay your burdens at the feet of the cross. Because we, no matter what we teach in this series, if you don't learn how to give your burdens to Christ, if your stress levels remain high, stress in itself will destroy your gut. Because stress will produce hydro, higher levels of hydrochloric acid that will chew on an, your, your, the walls of your stomach and destroy it. Stress will make uh, bacterial and fungal growth. Stress will, 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 um, will flip your microbiome into an unhealthy state. So if you are listening to me and you're one of the people who you deal, you're struggling with stress, mommy, start to talk to the Holy Spirit about it. Because whatever we are going to prescribe here, if you cannot manage your stress levels, you're gonna, be, you're gonna struggle to, to, to improve your health. You're gonna struggle to, if you're trying to lose weight and you're stressed, you're gonna struggle. You're gonna struggle. The other thing, I'm, I'm, now, I'm just going through things that affect uh, your immune system. I talked about your gut. I've talked about stress. The next thing is your sleep. 
And that's why I asked earlier, how many hours of sleep are we getting per night? If you're not getting good levels of sleep and you've all heard that we need at least ideally eight or more hours of sleep per night. Why? Because when we are sleeping, the body rejuvenates. The cells even rebuild themselves when we are in a state of sleep. The stomach, the digestive system takes a break from digesting food and just rejuvenates. So God has made our bodies where the body can rebuild itself if we follow some of the health principles that God himself put in place. For example, the circadian rhythm. What is the circadian rhythm or the circadian system? Is a system of darkness and light which God put in place, right? God made us where ideally we are supposed to be sleeping as it starts to get dark. That's actually a guide to how long we should be sleeping. If we follow the way God made us, the body will be healthy because we're not going to be up at eight, nine o'clock at night eating. We will be sleeping. But I'm, I myself am one of the culprits. I struggle with going to bed on time. And then people who wake up when it's still dark, we're supposed to sleep and then wake up when it's daytime. And then we're supposed to be active during the day. So that's the circadian rhythm. It ties to our sleep and what we're doing with our sleep. Okay, somebody just said nurses who do nights. Yes, and that's why nurses who do nights, it messes up their health a lot. We appreciate our nurses. Because what would we do without them if we were sick in the middle of the night and there was no doctor or no nurse? But truth is, it does affect their health. So sleep is very important. So some sessions, we're going to talk more about sleep. We're going to begin to, I'm going to begin to give homework or let me say exercises, action points that we need to go and do. Where we're going to say, okay, our challenge for next week is everybody start to see how you can build your sleep hours. We're going to begin to do that so we can motivate each other. This is going to become like a club. It's not going to be just me talking every session like this. Okay? Because I, want to, I don't want to just talk. I want us to begin to put these things into practice. So by the time we hit December, there's been a transformation. Everything I do in ministry is about bringing transformation. It's not just for us to just come and sit here and talk and enjoy the speech. This is not meant to be a speech. <laughs> okay? All right. So sleep was the third one. And then the fourth one, which is what I was talking about earlier, is our exposure to toxins. All right. So as we go through these sessions, we're going to begin to work on our guts. We we'll work on our stress levels. We we'll work on our sleep. We're going to work on our toxic overload to bring it down. OK. Are we all, let me see how we're doing for time. We have 10 minutes. I think I'm going to stop here for today. Um, and let me open it up so people can unmute themselves. And um, maybe you can throw if a couple of questions or so I can take them before. If you want to unmute yourselves, that's fine. We can have a bit of a general discussion before we close down because we only have 10 minutes to go. So I believe that we've laid a foundation today for what we're, um, what we're going to be doing in this series. All right. Any questions? Ladies, don't be shy. You guys want me to be shy? <laughs> I think I have a question. You know, after you talk about all the parts, of course, it sounds very scary because <laughs> <laughs> I see them in my kitchen and, I, and I'm just thinking about um, how much, you know, it, it, it's like you take your own hands, you take your money and buy these things. And I know that you'll probably get to it, but uh, just quickly, can you tell us what kind of pots are safer to use? Okay. Okay. And we can do a, a session just on, like I said, things to take out of your kitchen or even pots, <laughs> you know, but okay. Just for a quick answer for today. Typically I would say, take out, take away from your kitchen, all Teflon pots, take away all aluminum pots, right? say <laughs> kitchen deliverance. <laughs> Amen. Yes. And begin to buy steel pots, 
steel pots are one of the good pots. Some years ago, I began to switch pots in my kitchen like that. I don't buy for years now. I've not bought any Teflon pots. I just wore them out. And if you can even go cold turkey and just throw them, go ahead and do that. But if you cannot go cold turkey and just throw them, begin to slowly switch them, right? And the next time you're going to buy a pot, buy a steel pot, 100% steel pot. Thank you. Yes, Sister Yuti says she has changed to steel pots. Exactly. So change to steel pots. Mm -hmm. Iron pots are also good. Clay pots are also good. We'll have sessions where I can even show you guys. I actually bought some clay pots. Mm -hmm. Because it's just earth. So I've given you three examples of three different kinds of good pots that I have. Yes. Clay pots I ordered on Amazon. I ordered one from Amazon and then I ordered the other one from an Indian. Um, there's an Indian business out here in Dallas. I ordered one of my clay pots from them. Okay, so talking about pots, that's, that was a good question. Yes, but I think this is going to be a very interesting series because, look, there's something that those like people like Sisangum who they hear me talk all the time in the ministry, I always say this, when we, this, just the same way that when we do deliverance, right, and you discover that, oh, this is what the devil has been doing to you. Uh-uh, it's not meant to scare you, ladies. This session or even deliverance, when you, if you realize that you have demons in you, it's not meant to scare you. Guess what? Those demons have been in you from since without you even knowing that they were there. When you did not know they were in you, they were having free reign. They were destroying you, doing whatever. Now you know, don't get afraid. Mm -mm. Now that you know, they cannot damage you as much as when you did not even know they were there. It's the same with health. When you were ignorant of these things, you were worsening your toxic overload. But now that you know, you're going to start doing things to make it better. So it's going to change. It's not going to be the way it was. It can only get better because we will, in subsequent series, we're going to start to deal with how do you detoxify? Okay. So I give you guys an example. I just did a gallbladder detox on yesterday. Yesterday was Friday. I started it on Thursday. I finished it yesterday. I just did a powerful gallbladder detox where you actually pass out gallstones. You clear out. You clean out, you, you flush your gallbladder pretty much. Your, you flush out your bile duct, let me put it that way. Because our bile ducts get blocked. You flush it out. So for me, I, we're going to learn how to do heavy metal detox. We're going to learn how to do liver detox. We're going to learn how to do even a lymph lymphatic detox. How, to, how do you flush out your lymphatic system? Because the lymphatic system, that's another cause of a lot of disease because it's stagnant. It doesn't move like the circulatory system, for example. And there are certain things that if you don't learn and do them, then your lymph, your lymphatic system can get really toxic. How many people have sometimes you felt nodules underneath here or underneath your armpit? You felt nodules. That meant that your lymphatic system was, was uh, heavily toxic. So we're going to, I'll take you guys through different types of ways of detoxifying so that you can begin to do those things. And then, so you can, you can, we can learn those kinds of how you cleanse yourself by doing those things. And then what do you do on a day-to-day -day basis, right? So for example, the gallbladder and the liver are tied to each other. So there are things that I do on a day-to-day -day basis to make sure that my liver and my gallbladder are maintaining the cleanse. Amen. I see like somebody has, let me go to the chats and see. I think someone is asking me something. Okay, Sister Becky. Sister Becky, I'm not sure what your last name is, but um, who do you know here that you see here that you can 
contact to give you my number to WhatsApp me. Or let me just put my number here so you can WhatsApp me. I'll just put my number here. Anybody who wants me to add them to the ministry forum, just so that you can stay abreast of the announcements. I'm not going to put you on the forum where we have a lot of information going. Okay, let me explain how it works. We have our T2 Mentor Academy. It's for those women who chose that they wanted to go deeper with me. And they've, we've been doing that for the last two years. We do heavy teachings. We actually do four hour sessions. We've been doing that. We do deliverances and things like that. There are some women who are there, but we have another ministry forum called AEM. I believe Sister UT is there. That's just Anita Eta Ministries WhatsApp forum. We, we don't do much on that forum, so we don't overload you <coughs> with information. We mainly just do ministry announcements on that forum. So that's the one that I'm saying. If anybody wants me to put them there, that way, that's my number. I just put my number. Um, as a matter of fact, you know what I did? I put the number to the phone. Sister Pauline, I sent it to you. Let me send it to everyone. That way, anybody who wants me to add them to the forum so they can stay on top of announcements for when we are doing the sessions. Okay. Can everybody see it now? That's my phone number. If you take that and just WhatsApp me and I will add you to the forum. Okay. Let me see what else someone else is saying. Okay, Sister Becky, which one is African Marco Cut? Is that not the um, is that not the aluminum parts? I, I thought the Marco Cuts are aluminum, or, or is it not? Or you mean is it like the, the uh, iron part? Iron part? If it's iron part, it's good. If it's aluminum, it's not good. Mm-hmm. I mean, I know we used to call some pots macrocot, but right now that I'm an adult, when I was small, I remember, but now as an adult, I'm trying to think which one is the macrocot. Is it the iron pot? I think it's the iron pot. In which case, and, pot, and then. Woman of God, I think the macrocot is the aluminum pot. That's what we call it in the, oh. it's the French area. Yeah. Oh, the okay. Pot. Then the macrocot is not good. It's not good. Yeah. Not good. Alubasa, exactly. Oh, no, no, no. Uh -uh. Alubasa, uh -huh. yeah. mm -hmm. that one is not good. Yes, and then let me see. Oh, okay, Sister Becky says she knows Sister Yoti. Yes, Sister Yoti knows all my information. <laughs> Sister Yoti can help you connect with me. Okay, um, let me see. Okay, Sister B says she has a question. Yeah, I have a quick question, please. You mentioned something about headaches. Mm -hmm. And uh, I sometimes suffer from that, and I'm trying to get rid of it. Okay. So you mentioned something about head. I didn't quite uh, gather all the information. Can you please shed more light on that? Thank you. Yes. I think when I mentioned headaches, I was giving headaches as an example, as one example of um, toxic overload. So if you are getting headaches frequently, it could be a sign that you need to cleanse. And a lot of times you're going to find that if you, if you cleanse, the headaches may stop. Or it could also be a sign that your gut is not right. And if you fix your gut, the headaches will stop. But headaches can be two things. Headaches can be your physical health. Headaches can also be as a result of spiritual health because headaches can also be spiritual. So it can be either or. And sometimes ladies, headaches can even just be, is, headaches is your body telling you that something else is wrong with you. Sometimes a headache could just be telling you that you have not had enough sleep. Headache could be telling you that your hormones are out of balance. Headaches could be telling you that your gut is sick. Mm -hmm. That's correct, Sister Ngum. Headache can also be telling you that you are dehydrated. That's true. And headache can, can be also telling be... you that you are deficient of certain nutrients. I even have a, a software for those who live with me, by me in the same city. I can measure your nutrients levels. To, to Man see. of God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I, I, I don't want people to take headaches blindly. If you have a um, history mm -hmm. of hypertension, please, mm -hmm. I want you to be very careful. Mm -hmm. A headache can mean that your blood pressure is very high. high and that you can be a near stroke issue. 
So please, if you have hypertension and you have a lot of headache, do mm-hmm. check your blood pressure and make sure that you are not having some stroke symptom. Thank Amen. you. Thank you. And those of you who are medical people, if you are here and you're a doctor, a pharmacist, a nurse, thank you so much for interjecting, Sister Isabel. Feel free to throw in the medical aspect of what we are touching right on because I am taking you guys to the fundamental level of the, the cause, right? Because the, the doctors, the pharmacies, the nurses, they deal with us at the point where we are already so sick. What I am doing with you guys is taking you guys to the fundamentals, to what is causing you. By the time that you are having hypertension, it's because your systems in your body are already broken. And so while a pharmacist may give you a certain medication or a nurse may handle it in that way, I am taking you back to the cause of that. So we are going to begin to address what is even causing you to get to the point where you can be having hypertension. But thank, thankfully, we have doctors, medical people here too. We can even, they can feel free to chime in so that we can even have a more comprehensive discussion as we move forward. So thank you for that. Yeah. yeah. Pastor Anita, mine has been, when I was a little child, always. Mm-hmm. So my dad had my grades. So it's hereditary. Her- her- hereditary so i'm praying for the lord to deliver me from my grains yeah so because my grains can be time. Yes. yes and when we talk I about it, it, I no high blood though. i check myself no high blood none of that but a small child if you, it's like leave the hospital and go and write exams and leave the hospital and go, and go to uh, classes and stuff dispensary you know say kind of dispensary from yeah. five and other stuff and then high school too i had to attend classes so my whole life i had my grains always on medication for my grains my whole life a small child but uh, what we're going to have to do, Sister yeah. B, we're going to have to look at all the other symptoms that I've, I've talked about today because even though your father had it and you had it, remember how I said that you are born carrying the, the, the toxic load of your parents. And so sometimes if, if you are born with some issue that your, one of your parents had and you inherited it, it still does not change the fact that you may still need to examine what other symptoms do I have? Because just like how you answered Sister Isabel, right? That you have checked your pressure and it's not your pressure, right? Okay, we begin to eliminate. With all the list of symptoms I gave today, we are going to, we have to take a look and see what symptoms do you have? What other symptoms do you have? When we look at the, the, the totality of your symptoms, then it begins to point us in the direction of what could be your own specific problem that is causing your headaches. I, for one, I used to have a lot of headaches when I was a teenager. But as I began to learn how to practice these things that I'm teaching, I don't get headaches like that anymore. So we have to look at what else is going on in your life and it will point us to what could be your own issue. And I see here, Sister Becky is saying that her husband has constant bloody stool and it hurts his lower stomach so much. So many years with drugs and no solution. This has been a serious challenge. Okay, you know what? And Sister Ngum answered that he should see a gastroenterologist ASAP, yes. But for me to talk as a holistic, um, as far as natural medicine, if you have him bloody stool, it could be a number of things, right? It could, okay, bloody stool can happen just even strictly from the fact that you are heavily constipated. It's the kind of thing that we need to understand what else is also happening with him because, for example, is he always constipated? Sometimes then just constipation can wound the walls of your colon. Mm-hmm. It could be also that you have hemorrhages. And if you have hemorrhages, when you push, it will cut you. Uh, a, a dry stool can cut and blood comes out with your stool. It could be that. It could be that your colon is sick. It could be an indication to of colon cancer. Because people who have colon cancer, sometimes they also have blood in their stool. So let me stop there calling me from Cameroon. There with me. Okay. Yeah. So it, but it's an indication, especially if it's causing pain on the lower side. Frankly speaking, he, I, I agree. He needs to go to a gastroenterologist. Let them take, you know, a, a, a scans and see what is good. Because those of us who do natural medicine, we also still need to work with doctors. So in a case like this, the natural medicine practitioner cannot see inside the colon right? Let him go. Let the doctor order him uh, um, yeah, scans. They need to take scans and see what is going on. When they see what is going on, 
the good thing with us in natural medicine is that no matter what is going on, I'm sure you've all read stories of people that had been told they were going to die of cancer. And when they changed their diets, cleansed their bodies, there are many who made it and were able to reverse their situation. So it's not a death sentence, it's not. But we work, in we work together with medical professionals typically for things like that. So if you, if a, if a, if you get a diagnosis, then we can look at how to begin to clean out your system. Because no matter what diagnosis they give you, bottom line, it was toxic overload. It was toxic overload that got you there. Unless it's a case where maybe you had an accident and fell and punctured your, 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 some organ in your body, then the organ started bleeding. That's different. But other than that, for most of us, it is to do with some type of toxic overload. Let me... I didn't want this. Um, okay, I'll take one more question and I'll turn off the recording. That way the, the, mess, the, the recording is not too long. And if you want us to continue chatting, I can still be taking questions. But let me see, somebody else said something. Okay, what did the scans show? Hello, Sister Becky, what did the scans show? If a person is seriously sick like that, at that point, I may need to, you know, take them on as a private client, in which case that's different. That's outside of the scope of what I'm doing here. But yeah, because they may need to complete a questionnaire where I'm asking questions on many different aspects to see what else is really going on within them. So that we can see, we can get a better feel for um yeah, because she says they don't many scans. That way the scans can tell us what they are, what it's seeing. And then we can we can go from there. We may need to talk separately, Sister Becky. All right, as Sister Ngum says she has a question. I see her hand is up. All right, go ahead and ask, Sister Ngum. Um, yes, I'm interested in the gut health bit. Mm -hmm. Um could you tell me, please, or tell us the difference between prebiotics and probiotics and how, to, if you've got any, if there's any that you would recommend, because there are so many out there on the market. I would like to get some, but I'm not even quite sure what I'm buying. Yeah. Prebiotics and all of these things are a topic by themselves. <laughs> okay. Probiotics is the good flora, or let me say good bacteria, right, that creates the right microbiome in the gut. That's probiotics. Prebiotics is the things that we take to feed the probiotics. Does that make sense? So for example, there are, there are type of foods that will grow your probiotics to help you to have the right balance between good bacteria and bad bacteria in the stomach. Because even bad bacteria have their function within the gut. It's just that the ratio needs to be a certain way. And when the ratio has flipped, where the bad bacteria is more than the good, the good guys, then we start getting sick. Then the gut is not functioning the way it's supposed to function. So there are prebiotics is what feeds the good guys. And all our bad foods like sugar and all those things feeds the bad guys. So the way that you grow your probiotics is not just by buying probiotics, that is fine, but you also need to feed the probiotics that you're taking or that are already in your system. One of the good things that will feed them, for example, is fiber. Fiber and certain fruits and vegetables, they feed the good bacteria. And that is what is described as prebiotics. So, and we can do a, a full session on, on that where I can bring you know, different examples. Because probiotics is a whole topic. Because even how you take it, how many billions are in it, whether it gets destroyed before it actually gets to the guts, which ones are better for the guts versus which ones are better for the colon. There's all those different things when you start getting into probiotics and prebiotics. How do you feed them? You can feed, you can, you can increase your, 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 your probiotics in your colon, for example, through implants like enema, 
type implants. You can do that, or you can take some orally. It just depends. There's something that I take now that I order from Florida, which is a powerful probiotic that is made out of coconuts. It's just a raw probiotic. It's powerful. That works for me, and I take it. Another. So what am I trying to say? Sometimes the tablets, the capsules may not be the strongest because they've been on the shelves, depending on the conditions of them. There are simple probiotics that you can even make in the house yourself. But one of the best probiotics is sauerkraut, kimchi. If I open my fridge right now, I have some. In other words, fermented cabbage is very high in probiotics, but it's also high in prebiotics because the cabbage itself also feeds the, 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 the bacteria. So it kind of does a, the double function. So that's a little bit about prebiotics and probiotics. So hopefully that answers your question. But there, yeah, that's a good topic that at some point as we begin to do, as we begin to deal more with how do you heal your gut, then we can, we can handle I struggle with my gut a lot, a lot. It will be if, sometimes when you eat, you feel pain in your gut. Your, your belly is telling you something. I had to learn how to read the signs that my body is telling me. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me take us off the recording.